Do you want to play myths and misconceptions? Clayton, I can't hear a thing you're saying. Fine. Would you like to play myths and misconceptions of the ACA round two? Bring it, Darth. Very good. True or false? My employer must offer me and my family <laughs> health insurance. Ooh, that's a tricky one, but false. Only some employers have to offer health insurance to their employees. Businesses with one to 49 full-time employees don't have to offer health insurance to their workers or workers' dependents. Businesses with 50 or more full-time employees have to offer health insurance to their full-time employees. Starting in 2016, they will also have to offer health insurance to employees' dependents up to age 26. Okay, try this one on, Obi-Wan Kenobi. True or false, my employer can help me pay for a marketplace plan with a health insurance stipend. False. Employers may not reimburse employees for insurance premiums paid with their take-home pay. Employers may not use a standalone health reimbursement account, or HRA, to reimburse premium payments to their employees. An employer may increase an employee's salary or provide them with a yearly bonus with the hope that they'll use it to purchase health insurance, but the employer can't require employees to use the raise or bonus for health insurance. Employers also can't require employees to prove they have coverage. This raise or bonus wouldn't be tax-free and would be subject to normal income and employment taxes. So tax-free they would not be? No. No? Mm -mm. Fine. True or false, if you sign up for a health savings account compatible plan, then you must also sign up for a health savings account. False. A health savings account, or HSA, is a savings account available to taxpayers who have a high deductible health plan. In a high deductible plan, consumers pay a large amount out of pocket before their insurance company begins to pay in. A consumer doesn't have to have an HSA just because they sign up for an HSA compatible plan. However, the consumer can only have an HSA if they have a high deductible plan. Make sure you explain to consumers what HSAs can be used for and how they work. HSAs can be used for qualified health expenses, such as services, tests, procedures that insurance won't cover, such as glasses, dental care, and most over-the-counter medicines. With HSAs, consumers can get instructions for setting up their HSA account through the insurance company or a banking partner, put in before tax money, usually through direct payroll deductions. If a consumer has an individual insurance plan, like one purchased through the marketplace, they'll most likely make after-tax contributions, either on a monthly basis or as lump sums throughout the year. Then, they'll report the contributions at tax time. Use a debit card to pay for qualified health expenses. Other options include using an online or smartphone application to transfer funds directly to a provider or pharmacy. Can't win, Darth. Strike me down and I'll become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. Hmm. It is obvious the force is with you. I challenge you to this one. True or false, a doctor may accept certain health insurance plans, but not others. True. Not all doctors have to accept all health insurance plans offered. All through the year, doctors and insurance companies sign contracts that outline what plans the doctor's offices will accept. Consumers need to check their plan's provider directory before making an appointment to make sure their doctor will accept their plan. It's also a good idea to have the consumers call the doctor's office to make sure that doctor takes their specific plan. Just because the doctor says they accept ABC Insurance Company, for example, doesn't mean the doctor accepts all ABC Insurance Company plans. Before their appointment, consumers should call their doctor's office and insurance company to ask if the doctor is in network for their specific plan. For example, they should ask if the doctor accepts ABC CareLink Plus, not just ABC Insurance Company. But here's something important to note. A doctor's office cannot refuse to see a patient just because they don't accept that insurance. The patient can still make an appointment to see the doctor if they're an existing patient, but they'll have to pay the out-of-network pricing. This will cost the consumer more than seeing a doctor who's in-network. You are now a Health Literacy Jedi Master. 
I deem you ready to fight the dark forces of health insurance confusion. Okay.